In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily get the glyphs, including getting 14 in a matter of minutes. I'm also going to cover finding the portal, but not only finding the portal, but finding a portal on a perfect planet. How to easily find those perfect planets, how to get to the centre of the galaxy with one glyph, and yes, you can do all this early game. There'll be chapters if you need them, and hopefully when you finish watching this video, you'll end up with a portal base not only that you find extremely useful, but you'll want to keep. And the No Man's Sky base you can see in the background, this is the only base I've kept on my original save. Getting your first couple of glyphs. In the space station, you want to look for travellers. Of course, they'll look different to the three main races, and they'll have traveller in the title. You want to interact with them and have the conversation, and if you get the reply right, he'll give you 100 nanites. And then you have to interact with them again. You ask him where he came from, it'll cost you 100 nanites. And that will give you his grave location. So all you have to do now is go there. As we head down to the grave, you might be lucky and find these on the planet without having to go to the traveller. When you're scanning, just look out for that symbol. Just interact with the grave and extract the glyph. You also might get some memory fragments, they are very useful. And for me, this was my second glyph. But if you're having problems finding one at the space station, I've got another method for you. Go into space and call in the anomaly. What you want to do is go up to the Nexus. And the mission you're looking out for is eliminate hazardous flora. It doesn't matter if it's Quicksilver or a standard mission, as long as it's eliminate hazardous flora. So let's initiate the mission and leave the anomaly. Head to the planet. If need be, use your target sweep to find it. But you don't have to do the mission. Just put down a base computer. Then reload your save, but make sure it's the restore point. You'll reload back in the anomaly and then head to the anomaly teleporter. Then teleport to the base that you've just put down. Now all you do is extract the glyph. It might be possible to extract the glyph during the mission, but with each update the game keeps changing and then changing back. So this is the safest method. You could repeat this several more times, but you have to do it at different places in the galaxy. But at the end of the video, I'll show you how to get all the glyphs in minutes. But you'll need a portal for that. And if that's all you require, just jump ahead to the chapter, how to find a portal. But up next is how to find the perfect planet to have the ultimate portal base. First thing we need to do is go to the anomaly. Speak to the ship merchant at the back. And if you haven't got it already, pick up the teleporter receiver. And that will unlock the economy scanner. So pick that up and the conflict scanner as well if you can afford it. If you're in a system with no lush worlds, a quick way to find a lush system is to go to catalog and guide, click on materials and items, go down to plants, and then go to star bulbs and locate substance. So when you check log, you'll notice you've created yourself a little mission. And when you go into the galactic map and you've installed your economy and your conflict scanner and you can now see the economy type and the conflict level in each system. But back on track, let's head to the system with the star bulb. You'll have to scan each planet to see what type it is. When you've found a star bulb planet, of course you have to head there. They have different names, this one says Overgrown, while this one is called a Humid Planet. To make life easier, here's a list of all the lush planets. But before even landing on the planet, if you're by yourself, 
or your multiplayer is turned off. When you go in camera view, the game pauses, and by moving the sun around, you can check out the planet and see what it's like at different times of day. So if you don't like it, you can simply leave. But when you're looking for the perfect planet in your ship, you have to land on the planet to find out exactly what kind of weather system you're going to have. And as you can see, the weather on this planet isn't ideal. The weather types you're looking for are in this list here. So let's head to this paradise planet. Use the camera to check the planet out. And as you can see, the weather on this planet is beautiful. But there's a better way to find the perfect planet. After a few jumps in early game, you should already have had your freighter battle and now have a freighter. So let's go to the freighter. Go up to the command desk. The one you're looking for is upgrade control, which is in front of the green steps. And you want base parts and upgrades. Because you can get the interstellar scanner, but that'll cost you four salvage frigate modules. And there's a chance you might have the master beam, but you might not. But your priority is in your freighter construction modules. They'll each cost one salvaged frigate module. And you need to get the fleet command room to unlock the scanner room. The rest in that tree are useful, but not necessary. Now you've got two options here. You can go with difficulty setting set things to creative, then you get everything for free. Or you can get salvaged frigate modules from the mission agent in the space station. That has a low chance. The mission agent at the pirate space station, again, a low chance. Rewards from the Nexus mission, slightly better than the other two, but not by much. You can also shoot up freighters and pirate systems, so that's not bad. But the easiest way that doesn't involve any conflict is to go to the cartographer, the map merchant, and select exchange specific charts. The one you want to exchange is the stress signal, but you will need navigation data. Which you should find around the space station in those little cubes. And those little round discs. But sometimes it's difficult to find them in all space stations, so pick them up as you go along. Now all I have to do is head to a planet. And pop the map. And if it doesn't say freighter crash site located, the one with a little exclamation mark, reload your game. And make sure to select restore point. And if you tried it several times and it still hasn't come up, move to a different part of the planet. I've moved to another part of the planet and I'm about to pop the map again. And I had a lot more luck this time it came up first time. So let's head to the freighter crash site. And what you're looking for is these cargo pods. There should be about six of them at each crash freighter. I believe you have to dig up about four of them. The other two are above ground, but hidden inside some doors. In this case, I got a cargo bulkhead. But from this one, I got a salvaged frigate module. And from the single crash freighter, I got three salvaged frigate modules and one cargo bulkhead, which is enough to go perfect planet hunting. So it's time to activate our planetary probe. And as you can see, it discovers everything in the system. You now have the ability to rename all the planets as well as the system. But more importantly, when you click on the planet, you can instantly see what kind of weather system it's got. So let's walk to another system. When we get there, go to our planetary probe. Activate it. Inspect the planets. If there's nothing you like, you can move on, but in this case there is. This planet has a refreshing breeze. 
So it's met most of the criteria. All we need to know now is how it looks. So let's head to the planet. Yep, I think this one will do. So it's time to find a portal. To find a portal, you have to go to the space station. Go to the map agent. Get your free navigation data if you can. Have a little chat with the map agent. Choose Exchange Specific Charts. The one you want is a purple one, Ancient Artifact Sites. And this is where the economy scanner that you picked up for the anomaly comes in handy. When you're in the planet's atmosphere, scan for the trading outpost. And then head for that outpost. It's a weird habit, but I do like to get in and out of my ship when I've landed somewhere, just to doubly make sure I've saved at this point. Now you want to pop the ancient artifact site map, and what you're looking for is the monolith. In this case, I got alien artifact detected. So I'm going to reload my restore point. Remember, it has to be the restore point that you reload from. And that should reset your map, so you can pop it again. And this time I got the alien monolith. You might have to do several more reloads, but if you're having no luck at this location, do what I'm going to do next and then move to another part of the planet and try from there. At the trading post, talk to any merchants that fly in, select offer to trade and buy some Gek relics. And if you want, pick up some Gek nip as well. In fact, it's worth having all of these in stock just in case. But let's head to the monolith. When you land, get back in and out of your ship. I know, you don't need to, but I do. When you first interact with the monolith, you're given a little puzzle. And if you're not paying attention, there's a good chance you'll get the answer wrong. And if you do get the answer wrong, you can't move on to the next stage. But don't worry, that's why I got you to get in and out of your ship. Reload your restore point. And this time when you answer the question correctly, you'll get a little beam of light that goes into the space. So when you interact with the monolith again, to locate the portal, in my case you have to offer the Gek Relic, but it could also be the Kovacs Casting, or the Viking Dagger. So all you have to do now, is head to the portal. And as you can see, this is a perfect place to build a portal base. When it comes to powering the portal, all the materials will be nearby. If you can't see that nearby, you may be able to find it at the space station. But that's not it. I'm going to go one better. So if you've followed along with me and you haven't jumped ahead to the bits you need, then you probably only have two or three glyphs. So how about having the perfect portal base on the perfect planet at the centre of the galaxy? And this works for every galaxy. Just input the sun rising glyph over and over again. You may get a warning. Don't worry about it. Just go through the portal. You'll probably find yourself on a planet with lots of bases. But this planet will be overcrowded, so go into space. As you can see, I'm only 5,000 light years away from the center, but I'm going to jump a few times to get away from the crowd. But don't go left or right, go up or down. Most people stay in the same plane, so by warping up or down a few times, there's a better chance of finding untouched parts of the galaxy. And when you feel you're far enough away, call in your freighter. And start using your planetary probe again to find that perfect planet. When you find the perfect planet, return to the space station if you haven't got enough maps. Go to the planet. Check the planet out. And then find your new portal. So you're at your portal and you want to build a base. The first thing you want to do is scan for the hotspots. This will help you determine the best place to put your base computer. You want energy, mineral and gas. You might only get two of the three 
but it is worth the time surveying the area around you. It is also very important not to build near the portal. Yet some updates means you can, but from time to time, your base might disappear or it might sink. There's all sorts of little issues that pop up. So I've found by looking for the indent round the portal is an area that I will not touch. I will not put any wiring through it. I will not put any piping through it. I will not dig up at all. As you can see here, I've kept my base to the right. And for this portal, I won't build on the flat ground round about it. But in the meantime, I'll throw together a little hut. And the only thing I'll have close to the portal is a teleporter. And when powering the teleporter, I'll make sure the wire does not go underground. And I always like to put a save beacon or a save point at the teleporter. And if you're looking for some ideas, I've got plenty of glitch and non-glitch building tutorials. And finally, how to get all the glyphs in a matter of minutes. You only need two glyphs, the first two. You need to be in Euclid, and this is the address you want to input. As soon as you land on the planet, head to a nearby base. There's few nearby, so anyone who's got a working teleporter. Let's teleport to a couple of bases to make sure it's all working. Yep, they all seem to be working. Not all of them are glyph bases though. Oh, and if you've been to Anomaly, you might find that you've got Anomaly bases in your cache. So get in and out of your ship and do a reload or a restart on this planet. And then when selecting the bases, carefully read the names. That should give you a clear indication if it's a glyph base or not. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of bases on this planet. A very useful resource indeed. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, hit that like and subscribe button. Oh, and the bell thingy. And of course, thank you for watching. See you all later.